Well, hello YouTube. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on Lefty's Deceiver. Uh, this is a fly that he developed in the 1950s and there's a lot of variations uh, representing numerous different types of bait fish. This is a staple in the saltwater fly fisherman's fly box. And I'm going to teach you today how to tie the deceiver. These flies I'm going to send off to um, my offshore fishing uh, team, Fortuna. These would be great for uh, mahi, uh, even uh, bluefin or you know other tuna as well. But uh, back when I used to go offshore, this would have been uh, a great pattern to uh, throw out and, and strip back or, or swing behind the boat. These are very good in the river. They are very good in the bays. They're good in the ocean. It's just an all around great fly. And uh, you should have many of these in your box uh, matching whatever forage fish you are, bait fish you are going to be trying to imitate. So uh, first things first, um, we're gonna be using materials, the Gamagatsu SL113H20. This is a salt water hook. Spirit River, we're going to be using uh, some 3D molded eyes and if you watch this video to the end I will uh, show you a couple other tricks that uh, will make your fly a little bit better and very probably will entice some additional bites for you. Uh, we're going to be using some Flashaboo as well and we're going to be using white but uh, this is just a Spirit River saddle hackle. Um, just to show you a, a brand and as well bucktail natural white and uh, yellow or chartreuse or green or olive or black or blue whatever color uh, that you're trying to uh, match the, the hatch with so called so I've got my hook here set and I'm going to use the uh, Unimano I like this for saltwater flies. I'm just going to start it right at the head. And I'm going to wrap wide spirals all the way to the back. And just about to the barb. It depends on, you know, where the bend of your hook is, how far back you're going to going to be wrapping. And at the very end where I'm wrapping, I'm going to wrap just a, a little lump of thread and this will help the hackles stand on a little better okay there you go next step I'm gonna use white um, saddle hackles uh, the way uh, I lefty used to do it was he would grab um, a cluster four five feathers roughly Okay, so there's, uh, there's about four or five in here. What he used to do was he would grab them and he would just roll them in his fingers like this to, to straighten them out. And uh, I'll also explain at the end, you can wash your fly down with hot water after you're done tying it and it'll straighten all those fibers out. So now that I've got the clump that I'm gonna use, I'm just going to snip it off, get all the extra feathers out of here. You want this, this is a long profile fly and you're going to want this to be roughly three times the length, the shank of the hook. Now you can vary that uh, depending on the size of the fly that you're tying. This is 2.0, this is big, I'm going to be sending this to go out offshore. Uh, for big pelagic fish, so I'm going to tie this one just a little bit longer and get your feathers in and now you're simply just going to right on the top wrap them in okay that looks good next step this is your crystal flash. So you're not going to want a whole lot 
a flash, crystal flash, uh, maybe six, seven strands roughly. And I like, some people like theirs longer than the, the length of the, the saddle hackles. I like mine just pretty much to the end of the saddle hackles. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to wrap on the side, this side. Now I'm going to come over onto this side. And all I did was fold it over the crystal flash. So your crystal flash is tied in. Now you can use crystal flash and cover the body. You don't really have to cover the body. I prefer to. I'm going to use pearl poly flash tubing. Wrap that back. Get any of the fibers out of the way. And I'm going to wrap to about where I'm going to start tying the head. So we're, we're approximately a quarter of the length of the shank of the hook here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pearl tubing and I'm going to wrap each wrap right in front of the previous, pulling it tight. Cut off the tag end. Okay, there you go. Now what I like to do at this point, and you don't have to, but I do anyway. Zap a gap. Just give it a... Little shot of zap a gap. That keeps it from getting chewed up. Uh, this is the holographic flashaboo. And I want this to be approximately, let me trim off the end just a little bit. You don't want this perfectly squared. There's about four or five strands here. Uh, I moisten them like I normally do just to keep them together and keep them from getting all out of control. Give it a wrap. Give it another secure wrap. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this side and just fold it back over. And just trim it to the desired length. Now I'm going to do the same step. Flashaboo, approximately five or six strands. And I'm going to bring it back to the furthest point that I really want this on the fly, which is going to be just, you know, right here, maybe about a half inch short of the uh, saddle hackle. Some people like it longer. I don't. I don't like it fouling uh, around the hook. Fold over the second half of this. Okay, excellent. Secured. In. Now this little bit of this little bit of flashaboo right here will really shine in the water. It will it will really make uh, a lot of uh, a lot of flash, the holographic silver flash on it. Okay, next step is bucktail. Now I'm going to cut, um, and one thing you want to keep in mind when you're using bucktail uh, or materials in general is to, you don't want to use a ton. 
uh, less is more in a lot of cases and this is one so all I'm doing here is I'm going to pull out all the fluff the loose fluff couple long ones now I'm gonna measure this up on the hook and I want it to be about one and a half the length of the shank of the hook ballpark and what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take the hair pinch cut on the angle now this is gonna get tied underneath so what I'm gonna do is get it in a position give a relatively loose wrap and then I'm just with my fingers I'm just gonna mush it mush it around and down going to repeat that same step on the other side about one and a half length of the shank of the hook underneath loose wrap followed by another loose wrap and then I'm just going to take my fingers and I'm just going to sort of smush the fur the bucktail into position and tighten it down now, I got a couple long hairs. Either you can trim them or you can hit them with the lighter. Okay, let's just clean up the head a little bit, tighten this down. is starting to come together very quickly next step bucktail this is going to be the top about a clump like this clean it out Okay, now I'm going to measure up to the same length as the other bucktail. And actually, this is good. I don't even have to re trim this. I'm going to just do a loose wrap, followed by another loose wrap, and cover, kind of smush the, the fur around on the top, cinch it down tie it in now I got a couple fuzzies over here clean them up nice okay now this fly technically would be done there's a couple other steps here that uh, I'm going to show you that can make this fly even better first of all some people will tie crystal flash red underneath I prefer to use marabou um, I just like the way that it swims and undulates underwater um, I think it does a little better job in this scenario than and I just pulled a little bit of red marabou off the quill, about like that. I'm just moistening it to keep it together. So by tying a little bit of red underneath, what this is going to do is look like either gills or the fish is bleeding. So either way, 
uh, when they see that red, it um, can trigger, definitely can trigger a bite, uh, you know. It, and another scenario too that I'm going to show you that is not tied on a lot of flies are, is adding in eyes, and that actually can make a big difference as well. I think that some fish will actually key in on the eyes. So now that I've tied my red marabou gills in, I'm going to tighten the head up, make it a little bit bigger. I, I like you know relatively large head on my saltwater flies. Okay, now that I got the marabou in there, I'm just going to grab it, pinch it. You want it about the length of the shank of the hook, and you don't want to cut it. You want to just pull it with your fingers and break it off. Okay, another step that I'm going to do right now um, is taking peacock hurl this is not in the requirements but what I like to do is to add some peacock hurl over the top a little bit longer than the bucktail and when the fly is swimming this will really kind of pronounce the the top part of the fly um, off the silhouette and and really give it uh, some additional color if you look at uh, this is just a, a spearing, but if you look, you can see it is a, a it gets darker across the top of the uh, top of the back on the spearing. Uh, a lot of fish are that way as well. So this is tied in about as long as I like it. Trim off the extra. Clean up the head. Now another good trick here is I got the head about the way I like it. So I'm just gonna tie this off with a whip finish. Okay. Now I'm gonna zap a gap the head And if you have any questions or comments, put them down below. Uh, I do I do read and, and respond to uh, the comments um, and questions. Let me know uh, you know what 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 you want to see or what flies or or whatever questions you may have. Okay, now I just put a fair amount of zappa gap on there, and that's just to hold this in place. Now I'm going to add, this is red mono, and I'm going to add just the tag end here. And this is sort of like a collar. And I like to, I like to do this with string, or sometimes I'll even take a strip of flashaboo or crystal flash. And I will add this collar, which kind of represents gills. Okay, now this is another step that's not required. However, if you're going to be tying flies, you might as well make them the best that you can. Now the next step is going to be your 3D eyes. Take a look. Okay, now this fly is more or less done. I'm gonna add more zap -a gap to it just to lock in the eyes.
you can use five minute epoxy you can use UV resin um, I'm just using Zappa gap because it's quick it works and it has the same effect as the others okay and this is your basic deceiver pattern this is a great pattern. Um, you should tie a lot of these in your box and um, have them with you. Uh, know what bait fish is around and, and ultimately match the hatch with uh, the flies that you're going to tie. Now often you'll see me moisten a fly. What you can do is you can run this under when the, the epoxy or your head cement is dry or uh, your uh, zappa gap. You can run this under hot water just like this and let hot water run right through it and what that'll do is that will lay the feathers perfectly flat so they're not all bunched up and and funny looking but there you go that is the deceiver style fly and you should absolutely have a bunch of these in your fly box thank you very much for watching and i will be getting out uh probably try and do one more saltwater fly uh before the summer is out you guys have a great day, and we will uh, see you hopefully on the next episode.